Hi there and welcome to my channel. My name is Katarina, I'm a knitter and in this video I'm going to take you with me while I'm making the Clematis sweater by Emma's Knits. I got chosen as a test knitter for this sweater and both the yarn and the pattern were given to me for a test knit. But to avoid any misunderstanding, I wasn't paid or asked to create this video. Clematis sweater is Emma's first design. It is a seamless top-down knit with fitted sleeves, one-by-one -one ribbing and a very special diagonal button like a detail. This pattern comes in 8 sizes. The sweater is knitted in two yarns held together, sport weight and lace weight. Emma suggested two main yarn combos, merino wool with mohair for a more warmer version and cotton cashmere blend with mohair for a cooler version. I live in a warm climate, so I've decided to go with a cooler version. I will be using Summer in Cashmere by PC Garn and Marled Silky Kit by Creme Casol Wool. I was worried how these two yarns will work together and at first was even disappointed with my color choice. However, as my project was growing and I was receiving comments from other knitters and people around, I fell in love. This color looks very different depending on the lightning but I generally call it Master Green. I was so thrilled to see how the colors would look together that I started making my gauge swatch the day I got my yarn. But it will be finished only now. Before starting my knitting session, I spent few minutes making some gentle stretches for my wrists because I want to be able to knit for a very long time. Here is my finished swatch, I ended up meeting the gauge of 18 stitches per 26 rows with 4.5mm needles and I'm very excited to cast on. I always struggle with figuring out how long should the tail be for my long tail cast on, so I needed a couple of tries to get it right. I also decided to cast on stitches using a bigger needle to make sure that the edge is not too tight. The pattern starts with a back panel, a simple rectangle, so I just knit back and forth until I reach the needed length. And this is me giving my sweater a ridiculous first try on. Here is my finished rectangle and just look how this yarn combo looks in the sun.
I'm now ready to put my back stitches on hold and start working on the front panels. At first I'm picking up stitches for the right front and working back and forth while starting to shape the diagonal button placket. And now I'm getting disturbed by my boyfriend. I have finished the right front and started working on the left front. But while doing this I noticed that something in my cage was off. It was noticeably bigger and it was definitely not the same as in my swatch. So I decided to unravel the whole thing and remake it using smaller needles. I ended up using 4mm needles for this project. Couple of days later we are back on track and I'm happy to finally work on the left front which will cover all the stitches on the left in the center near the neckline and few ones on the right to close up a diagonal placket. When people first look at the clematis sweater, they might assume that it is a cardigan that can be opened up. But it's actually a sweater, as name says. You can see here how fronts are joined together. I'm now ready to work on the body. I think I'll finish the balls of yarn I have and then switch to the neck color or sleeves. I have added about 15 cm to the body and I decided on making a color first. I'm picking up stitches and working in one by one rib in the round. Some testers decided to make ribbing in twisted rib, but I wasn't so sure about it and went with a normal one. I'm ready to cast off stitches using a tubular bind off. A lot of techniques in knitting can seem intimidating, but in reality you just need a tiny bit of patience and practice to get pretty comfortable with almost anything. Trying to close the bind off in the round correctly, but the tutorial I found didn't really help. The color is not folded and here is the finished result. Now I want to make sleeves.
The sleeves are fitted and the sleeve cup is shaped using German short rows. Another technique that can seem intimidating at the beginning. One thing I know about making German short rows is that you need to pull your yarn pretty tight to achieve the neatest result. And I do not think I'm very skilled in doing that as I sometimes forget. You can see here that the row with German short rows is not the neatest one. I'm now working on gradual sleeves decreases. Soon I will be able to get to the ribbon. The ribbon details are quite short in this pattern, so it just flies by. At the end my 40 cm circular needle is too big, but I'm too lazy to switch to a magic loop. This time when binding off in the round, I again followed the same tutorial and it worked much better. And here is the first sleeve, the length seems so perfect. And here's how the piece looks on me now. I want to make the second sleeve as well. May in Slovenia has been so so rainy, but today we have a nice sunny and warm weather so I want to go to the park and finish up the second sleeve there. Look at my progress so far, the color is done and both sleeves are done. I will now get back to work on the body, I need to add about 10 cm more to it, so I will just knit back and forth in stockinette and continue shaping the diagonal button placket. I know that people have different opinions on test knitting and so do I. But I find test knitting for smaller designers fulfilling, as it usually means that I can support other women in doing or starting to do what they love, and help them to get more recognition. It feels somewhat empowering, but maybe I'm just over-romanticizing it. Anyway, it seems to be one of the most enjoyable test needs for me so far. The test knitting group is so nice and Emma is very proactive and supportive. I made a good progress and I think it's time to try on and see. By the way, I'm wearing my cardigan number 8. I always struggle to understand what lengths I need and want. I'm so used to knitting everything cropped that I do not even understand what does it mean to make something full length and what it should look like. On another hand, I'm generally going for a more fitted and cropped look inspired by one of the testers. So I think I will start the ribbon for the body.
When binding off using a tubular bind off method, it can be difficult for me to control the proper tension so that on one hand the edge is not too tight and on the other it doesn't flare. It's done and all is left to knit are button plackets. Here is how the final lengths look. For the button plackets I first pick up stitches using a suggested ratio and then work couple of rows in ribbing. I started new balls of yarn for the button plackets to avoid joining in a new ball in the middle of my work. I now mark the places where I will make holes for the buttons. And now I make them. Seems like the first placket squeezes the fabric of the body, so I pick up more stitches for the second one and we'll see if it helps. It definitely looks better now. I'll now just cut the first button placket as it will be a disaster to unravel. I'm so happy that I decided to remake it. Oh, this sweater is going to be so beautiful! Now I will just weave in all loose ends. I decided to leave longer tails and cut them after washing and blocking to make sure that nothing unravels. I always hand wash my knits, I put them in a lukewarm water with gentle wool detergent for about 20 minutes. I used to squeeze excess water using towels, but now I'm just putting it in my washing machine on a gentle spin cycle and then let it dry flat. Time to choose buttons. Here are my options. I went with these ones as they seem to be the most unnoticeable ones. I don't know how to properly sew on the buttons, but I'm just doing my best and it works. I cut those little tails as a final step. And we are done! Here is how my clematis sweater looks. Even though clematis sweater is Emma's first pattern, it has been so well written from the very beginning, and all the testers have made it even better. The design is simple but unique, diagonal button placket is such a special accent detail that I haven't seen in the knitting community yet. It fits nicely, I love to undo one or two buttons. The back doesn't have German short rows or increases shaping and I know that some people find it essential for the better fit, but I didn't notice any issues. 
I love a lot how sleeves fit, the length is perfect. But I think I ended up with quite a short body. I needed it about 8 cm shorter than the pattern suggests and I might regret it a tiny bit. By the way, the sweater didn't grow after washing at all. As for the yarn, I do not have anything in particular good or bad to say about this combo. The cotton cashmere blend feels just like cotton but not in a bad way. Mohair is not the softest I have worked with and it's a bit too hairy for my taste. But in general it doesn't feel itchy or scratchy when I wear the garment. It however still irritates my skin a tiny bit near my neck if I wear the sweater for more than a couple of hours. Those two yarns work nicely together and created a beautiful fabric. At first I felt like mohair can make it uncomfortable to wear this piece in a warmer weather, but after giving it a couple of wears when we had about 17 or 20 degrees Celsius, I changed my opinion. I'm so happy that I can add now this wonderful piece to my handmade wardrobe. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching it and don't forget to leave a comment and a like and subscribe to this channel if you would like to stick around. I see you in the next one and wish you a lovely time till then.